going over here. A really hot pan. And I want to put them down gently so that the, the fat doesn't splatter. If there's any moisture on your legs, it's probably going to like spark up and splash. That obviously oil and water don't mix. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Um, but here, I'm just looking to get a nice little brown on these. It's going to have part of a nice flavor that we can add that's going to enhance the overall cooking of the rabbits. You just want to keep an eye on them um, a little bit longer. And obviously with pans, depending on where it is on the heat, you got to keep an eye on the hot spot, keep moving your stuff around, make sure you've got enough fat in the pan, and it needs to be hot when it goes in. I'm working with straight olive oil here, so it's going to add a little bit of flavor. But the thing about straight olive oil is that it's got a, a lower uh, smoking temperature. So it's going to get hot and start to brown a lot sooner than, say, grapeseed or canola oil or any of those other kind of industrial type cooking oils, like peanut oil as well. I wouldn't use that, but I, I'm, I don't peanut allergies. I don't mess around with, especially in the kitchen of people who I've never met before. Um, that's another thing you got to take into consideration. So we're, we're, we're browning off our, our rabbit legs, and I just want to get it to about there. As you can see, just a nice caramelization on the one side. You can go a little bit longer if you like. So we're also going to take into consideration the fact that these are going to cook at different times. I've got four different legs here. I've got two of the front legs and two of the back legs. Obviously, these are going to take different times to cook. So when I'm doing that, I need to take that into consideration. Um, rabbit, rabbit is so easy to cook. Like this braising method too is just so like so easy. It's hard to screw it up. I had a uh, a prep cook at Animal teach me how to do this. His name is Raymundo, and I kind of wish he was here right now because he would be laughing at me. As the amount of times and the amount of butchery of rabbits that I've done, it, it's kind of ridiculous. Like it just becomes so easy and so normal. So again. Same color on the other side, my pan's nice and hot. I'm going to keep it hot. I'm going to put my legs in the pan. Then I'm going to do what's called deglazing of the pan. Now, a lot of people think deglazing of the pan is only adding liquid to it and then you, you know, pick up all the liquid. So I've got this pan that's got all this flavor in here. It's not burnt. It's still like good. I don't want to lose any of that flavor. Smoking hot pan. So I'm going to add these vegetables. Now, what these vegetables are going to do, they're going to pick up all that flavor that's in that pan. I'm just going to let them sit there for a second and like let out, let out some of their, their liquid. Carrots, onions, celery. Basic, basic like starter for any sauce, any, you know, stock. It's called mirepoix. Named after the French diplomat who was the, I think the, uh, I'm not going to use the proper term here, but basically the chef that you started the foundation of this mirepoix, his boss is one of his last names was Mirawak. And I'm not going to try with French because I'm just going to butcher it. But as you can see, like here, we're getting a little bit of color on the onions. I want, again, that Maillard reaction. I want some caramelization. It's going to bring out a little bit of sweetness. And it's going to, you know, add that more depth of flavor to this whole thing. So we're going to let that go for just a second. And then at that point, again, everything's sticking. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. This is going to help the uh, water release from the vegetables. And now that we've got a little bit of caramelization, I think JB will be proud. We've got a vintage bottle of uh, Charles Shaw. Um, only the best here. I'm a little embarrassed now after he gives the demo, but uh, you know what's funny is that Tubuk Chuck is responsible for me getting a job back in the day. I've been a jack of all trades. I've worked everything, and uh, I used to be a video game tester. And I got laid off one day because our game got pushed back and they couldn't keep everybody on. So I went down to Trader Joe's with no money in my pocket and a desire to forget the day. And all I had was three dollars, so I bought a bottle of two-buck truck, applied for a job at Trader Joe's, and next thing I know I was running the demo station. <laughs>